What you're about to see from my point of view is probably the most important information that I could give. You could know everything about the Merkaba and how to create the fields, and you could know the cities, you could know everything else on, on the, uh, the creation of the Merkaba and how it works, but sh without uh, making the connection with the higher self, you wouldn't have the wisdom that would be necessary to actually use the Merkaba. And so, uh, what I'm about to give is everything I now know, and this is, this is always constantly growing. It, it, it's, a, it's an organic uh, structure that's happening. For a long time, when I taught this in the classes, and, as, and especially for any of you who've seen the old videos, um, and I, I gave a specific uh, technique to connect with higher self. I gave this technique because it was the one that I used or at least I thought that I had used uh, in the very beginning. But when I would watch the students that came to the class, I discovered that only maybe 50% or so of them were able to make the connection with higher self. And then there was this large group of people who, uh, no matter how hard they tried or whatever they did or how long they struggled or how much they meditated, nothing would happen. And after doing this for a few years, I began to suspect that I was missing something. Uh, back in uh, May of 1993, I asked my higher self uh, to give me the information that I was missing. I, needed, I knew that I needed more, and would it please teach me... Uh, so that I could teach others how, how to do this. It was no more than a month later, in June of 1993, at a workshop in, uh, I think it was Olympia, Washington, that uh, as I was signing up the people for this workshop, there, one man came through the door. He was uh, perhaps in his 50s. And uh, when I looked at him and I could see his aura, I could see no reason why this person was at my workshop. And uh, so I, at one point I went up to him and I said, you know, um, what are you doing at my workshop? You know, <laughs> you don't need to be here. And uh, he says, I don't know. He says, I just, I don't know why I'm here. I just think I'm supposed to be here. And so the workshop continued and after two or three days I went up to him again and started talking to him and found out that he was a kahuna from Hawaii and that, and so I asked him, I said, well, what, what do you, he says he was a teacher, and I said, well, what do you teach? And he says, I specialize in one thing, and that's connecting with higher self. And so when it came time for me to teach about higher self, I put him up on the stage, and I sat down in the audience, figured he knew more about it than I did, which he did. And he talked for about an hour and a half, and I really learned a lot in that, in what he had to say. Uh... Originally, the procedure that I, or the method that I was teaching on how to reach the higher self, I would talk about how you would go into the spherical breathing, and then once you would attain that, uh, you would uh, then write down on a piece of paper uh, uh, a specific, uh, asking for the higher self to give a very specific test so that you could prove you had made connection with higher self. And, uh, and then you would go into the meditation, go very, very deeply, and ask for the higher self, invoke the higher self to come in, and then ask it for a, a, a test, something that you could literally do and go out and do that would uh, demonstrate absolutely to you that you had made this connection from which you could go from there on forth. And that worked with some people. But the reason that it didn't work with the others was now becoming clear. My understanding of it was that there was me, and then there was my higher self. I wasn't aware that I had a lower self. I wasn't aware of this. Now, according to the Huna knowledge that this Kahuna was uh, giving to me, there are these three levels of existence uh, that humans are connected with. And since we know that everything comes in threes, uh, 
I, I should have suspected it a long time ago. Uh, there is the higher self, there is us on this everyday level, and there is this lower self. And according to the kahuna, you cannot reach the higher self, at least they've never figured out how. You can't reach the higher self by going directly to the higher self. You first have to go, not up, but down. You have to go down to the higher, lower self and connect with that. The lower self, according to the human knowledge, is the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind, according to this kahuna, he was saying that it was a, it was like a child. It was about two to four years old. Though recently I connected with another uh, kahuna who felt that it was more like four to six years old. So, I don't know, it's somewhere in there, it's a child anyway, it's two, four, six years old, and this is the level of awareness that you're dealing with on, on the subconscious mind. Um, and so, what the kahuna says is that uh, you must first connect w with the subconscious mind, but in order to do that, you can't do it from your sophisticated adult world. You could go into medicate, meditation and, and meditate and become extremely serious about what you're doing. But the more that you do that, the less likely that you're going to connect with higher self, with lower self. In order to connect with lower self, you must become childlike. And I don't mean being silly and giggling around and stuff like that. I mean that innocent place of a child, when you look into their eyes and you see no ego and you see this innocent, innocent child, that part of that aspect of us is, is in every one of us that has been suppressed and, and, and pushed down. And we must, in one way or another, allow that part of us to come out to begin the process. Some of you perhaps have read this book by uh, uh, James Redfield. Uh, the Celestine Prophecy. This would be a good book if you want to read what I'm really talking about and making this particular connection. Uh, the child, um, when it finds itself in nature or in any situation, uh, its attention level is focused directly and precisely on the here and the now and what is being presented directly to them. And, uh, and it is this attention and this uh, innocence that, uh, that we have to uh, begin to cultivate inside of ourselves. And so when uh, James Redfield talks about going out and connecting with the trees, which was the way the Druids used to do this, um, the trees are very powerful spirits. And in that connection through, through life, through the nature of the reality, uh, and through this particular innocence, this childlike innocence, this is the doorway, this magical doorway through uh, something can begin to happen that uh, if you have never experienced it or you don't know what it is, it's really, very really hard to believe until you can uh, actually do it and see what it is. This is what happened to me, and I didn't know that it was happening to me. I went to Vietnam. I was over in this war over there. I got very discouraged over humanity. And I came back and I thought, well, okay, I'm going to find God. And I decided I was going to do it by becoming a physicist. And so I went into the University of California and studied physics and mathematics and all this stuff, looking for God. And, uh, and got very discouraged in all of that way also. And I did this during the late 60s. Uh, and, you know, and imagine being in, in Berkeley, California. <laughs> <laughs> in the 60s when there were machine guns on the, on the corners and tanks everywhere and amazing people and I, I really got discouraged. Uh, it, the whole war that was in Vietnam was carried over. And what I did was, I just, and especially in 1970 when I graduated was the time of Kent State when all this, if, some of you may not remember, but the colleges of the United States closed down. And, uh, and I just said, this is it, that's the last straw. And I came here to Canada and I came not very far away from here, actually. And I, I found peace, and I found beauty, and I, uh, and I found a home out in the middle of nowhere in the mountains. And I decided to do what I always wanted to do, and that was to go live in the woods, 
with no money or anything at all and just live off the, off the land. So I always wanted to do that, and I did it. And I mean, I really did it. I lived on all... I had no money, and it didn't even matter because I'd learned how to, to live really, really easily. But in doing that, all my fantasies begin to come out. You know, and I used to, I used to go out and, and uh, begin to talk to the trees and, and the lakes and the water, and I begin to see that everything was alive and conscious. And, uh, and, and the more that I lived out my fantasies and the more that I did exactly what I always wanted to do, not doing what someone else wanted me to do, but what I really wanted to do, the happier I got, the more excited I got about life, I'd wake up in the morning and I'd be so excited I could hardly stand it. But another day on planet Earth was here, and, and I was just I was ecstatic all the time. I was in pure joy, and uh, and it just kept getting better and better and better. I got to the place where uh, animals would would walk, would come right up to me. I could walk right up to deer. I mean, right up to them and look at them right in the face, and they'd look right back at me, and they wouldn't even be afraid, and because I didn't have anything in me to. Uh, that was challenging them or, or causing fear. Uh, and I could walk right past bears and they would just sort of look at me and there was no anything. My wife actually would, I remember one time I walked right up to a, beer that, a bear that was eating a deer, which is like the most craziest thing you could do by normal ways of thinking because it'll just kill you. And she walked up to him and sat right down with him and watched him eat this. And the bear didn't even, didn't even, just looked at her and just kept on and going. And uh, even now, uh, when we were out one place, she'd, she'd just walk up and pick up a rattlesnake and look at it and put it down with no, uh, no problem because there was nothing going on. Well, it was in this kind of state that I reached unconsciously that I began to connect with my lower self, with the subconscious mind. And what I now know is the subconscious mind, my subconscious mind, is linked directly to the subconscious mind of the planet and to all nature everywhere. And so really when you're really talking about the subconscious mind, you're talking about the consciousness of the planet, the whole being of the planet. First the coincidences begin to happen. I would think something and it would just happen. I would uh, wish I would see a friend and he would just walk out of the woods. Uh, I, just one thing after another, after another, after another. And the coincidences began to fall so fast and so quick that I began to suspect that something was really going on with me. I didn't know what it was. But I did notice that this was happening way too often to just be pure coincidence. And then one day when we were, uh, de we had decided to study meditation, one day we were sitting there and uh, we were meditating and poof, these two big angels appear in the room. The one was, they were both about 10 feet tall and one was purple and one was green, translucent, you could see through them and they were identical and they were incredibly beautiful. And the love that was coming from them was just incredible. And... Uh, I didn't know what it was. The first thing they said to us was, we are you, on another level, another time. I didn't know what they meant. And I just started, uh, it was so beautiful, and my wife and I both connected with this at the same time. It was so beautiful that we just started following this. And soon after that, the miracles began to happen. Things began to happen that just can't happen, but they did happen and first one, and then two, and then things started happening every day, every day of my life. For two or three years there, I watched things happen that just simply can't happen. But it was so much fun, I didn't care. I, I let go, I didn't care anymore. I mean, I cared, I really cared, but I didn't care about the old way of thinking. And, you know, it didn't matter to me uh, what anyone thought. This felt right. And I kept going in this direction. And uh, one of the things they said 
which I never understood, was that the uh, about the uh, green and purple angel uh, being the earth and the sun. Uh, the green angel was the the spirit of the earth, which had the sort of a Kelly green, beautiful, clear, pristine color, and that the angel of the sun was sort of this ultraviolet color. And and at one point I got it, I understood. I remember they had had this experience, and I came back and I tried to put it into words, and it, it came out into a poem that just said. Uh, uh, I, I am the sun. I, no, I am the earth. I am the sun. And yet, really, I'm neither one. Meaning that I knew that I was even beyond all of that. I, I understood. and uh, But I didn't understand it in terms of words that I could communicate to anyone. And so, uh, I now feel that where we begin in this is through working to bring out the inner child and the inner innocence and I think that nature is the place out of these synthetic environments get out of these things that we've created in these rooms and these cars get into the trees and preferably even out of the country if you can so that you're out of the very mindset that you're normally in and uh, and to begin to interact with Mother Earth again uh, from a whole new way. This is where I would suggest that you begin trying, and uh, not in the actual meditation itself. You can continue to do the meditation and to keep working along those lines, but I think that for many people, this is going to be an essential step. Now, what the kahunas say is that at one point, after you've made connection with the lower self, with the subconscious mind, um, and what happens is you, you have to play with it. You have to have fun. You have to enjoy yourself. That's essential. If you're not having fun, something's wrong. Start over again. Go back to go. Um, the having fun is it's really, really important. And uh, in fact, there's a movie uh, around this very thing that we're talking about uh, called uh, Hook. Not many of you have seen it, about Peter Pan and how... Uh, Peter Pan is remembering his self as a child and the things that he's going through there and the things where he imagines the food on the table and all this for those of you who've seen this and if you haven't seen this I highly recommend you go and see this relative to all this uh, there is a tremendous amount of truth the whole play between the good and evil and all of that that's going on there is, is really a very, it's a very sophisticated movie and uh, and so you've got to play. And then what happens eventually, you will begin to see the, the coincidence happen. You will begin to feel the life flow moving through you and the connection. You'll begin to see the auras around people and trees and beings and the little, the little spirits uh, uh, of plants and the divas that are real beings that become alive and you can see them. And they come out. There are ultraviolet fields of light that you can see. And uh, all these things begin to start taking place. And then you know you're on the right path. You know for sure. And But the thing is, is about reaching to the higher self is that you can ask, you have to ask permission from the lower self, from, from Earth, to connect to the higher self, which in my way of seeing it is the sun. And you have to ask permission to connect from the earth to the sun, from the higher to the lower self, from the lower to the higher self. But the lower self may not allow you to. It may say, no, I don't want to do it. Let's, ple let's play some more. And there's nothing you can do. You just got to have more fun. That's all you can do. You just have to keep having fun. And, uh, and you just have to wait until the earth thinks you are ready in her wisdom as a mother when she sees you being her child uh, then she will at the right time allow you to go up and make the connection not toward the earth but away out toward the sun and out to all life everywhere else and um, and there's just nothing you can do but just uh, move with this 
and it's okay. It's the way that that it's been set up. I didn't even know I was doing it. I didn't understand it. I was just doing it without knowing why or anything else. At one point, though, and many, many, many people out there in, in the Ascension community who believe that they are connected to their higher self are probably really connected to their lower self. Because you can ask information from your lower self and get any kind of information you can imagine, anything doing with dousing, etc., and all these kind of things. These are all lower self connections. You can know anything through dousing. You can know where anything is. You can know anything. But you're really connecting with your lower self and through the earth, not to your higher self. Your higher self is not going to be concerned with those kinds of things. And uh, but when for me anyway, when I made connection with higher self, uh, what happened was a, this golden angel began to become apparent in my field of vision, uh, usually off in the back. And uh, I would ask the other one, "Who's this? Who's this angel over there?" And they just would say, "Well, that's the that's the golden angel. You'll eventually uh, learn about the golden angel." I remember one time they said, "Okay." They came to us and they said, the golden angel wants to talk to you. And so <laughs> we did this whole thing. We fasted for like three days and we waited and we thought the golden angel was going to come in and, and tell us you know, something that was going to totally change our lives. And it did say something extremely important, though it was so simple we didn't understand. We thought it was going to be a long something or other. It was going to go into. So we got all prepared and we waited and the golden angel comes in. And we sat there and looked at him and we were waiting. Okay, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? And he just looks at us very gently and says, it's only light, and goes away. <laughs> and it right over the top of our heads, it's only light. See me, it's only light. We didn't get it. It took me many years later to, to get that. You know, that was like E equals MC squared. <laughs> you know, I didn't know what they meant. Uh, though at one point, I slowly began to understand what they really did mean by that. And then finally, I noticed that as I was beginning to communicate with the uh, with my lower self, that uh, the lower self would uh, give me any kind of information I needed. In fact, there was a period of six months where the lower self told me every single thing that was going to happen the next day in great detail. I didn't mean exactly down to what when the telephones were going to ring down to the minute and and who would, what they were going to say and the letters I was going to get and everything else like this. And you can ask all kinds of information from the lower self, and um, they'll usually gladly give it to you, no problem. And so, but it's a polarity form of communication that was going on. I was talking to something that appeared to be outside of me, and then I noticed that I that in the beginning the communication was happening three and four times a day. But as time went on and the years went by, I began to realize that the angels began to appear less and less and less. Not that my connection to the earth was any less. I felt that all the time. But I didn't seem to need them very much. And then one day, about uh, three years ago, I was, or two years ago or so, I don't remember when it was, I was in Washington and I happened to be in a medicine wheel on Orcas Island. And I was sitting there in a circle about to give a, a workshop when the golden angel appeared right in the middle of the circle and just looked at me. No one knew what was happening, but this was a big thing for me. And the golden angel came right up to me and just turned and merged right over the top of me. And uh, I knew in that moment that I knew, I understood that I had just made my connection with the higher self. And the... There was no more after that a sense of any need to ask anything. Because after that, it's just whatever I needed to know, I just knew. And I didn't have to try to plan or do anything. The reality just opened up for me and just did it on its own. Another level of communication with God began to take place. And I now know that this continues on in a growth process that goes on up all the way back to the source. Though it may continue 
on various stages and levels. I don't know what they are at this point. But every time we come to those bridge, we'll know what to do, and that will be step. And it's just another first step, and it'll be, we'll be easily able to accept it as we go into each one. Uh, there is a problem that can develop once you have reached a higher self. I never experienced this, but the Kuhun has warned me about it. But I never had it, so I don't know. I have it not from direct experience, but what they said is that many times the lower self, in a very childish way, would imitate the higher self. And so somebody would think that they're connected to the higher self, or had been, and then they start communicating, thinking they're connected with the higher self when they're really connected with the subconscious mind. And, and so they would ask uh, for direction to do something, and the subconscious mind would have, send them all around the world or doing things or something else like that, and was just playing with them. You know, they're not going to do anything to harm you, but they could definitely uh, sit there and giggle and laugh at you, uh, doing things all over the place when it was not really uh, aligned with uh, the purpose that you originally came here for. And so the kahunas felt it was really important that every time you made connection with higher self, you asked, after you, and usually you have certain steps that you develop on your own, you ask, are you the higher self? <laughs> because if it is the lower self, the lower self won't lie to you. And it'll just go, no, sorry, I'm not the higher self. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's real important that you establish uh, each time uh, a, some kind of way to verify that it really is the higher self and not the lower. Though I never, if it did happen, I was never aware of it. I never had anything... Uh, I never felt any kind of uh, prankishness on the part of my uh, my lower self. Uh, to go to another level, uh, the higher self communicates through to you on so many levels that you have to use a really vast imagination to see it. It can be in any conceivable uh, language or languages that don't even exist, or languages that exist in other planets. It could be through colors, through sounds, tones, pulsing lights, feelings, emotions, your own voice. There are all kinds of ways. It could be through the reality itself. It could be through people that just come up and give you messages or license plate numbers, or all kinds of things and all kinds of ways, depending on what it is that you uh, want. And uh, there really is no limitation except what you put on it. And, uh, and I have seen all kinds of levels of communication in my own life that uh, each time be in ways I would have never thought of, uh, yet were very pertinent uh, to my understanding. And, uh, but once this level with the higher self is established, once you have reached this, and you know you have, then uh, then everything changes in your life, and uh, and you don't have to be uh, concerned. Uh, you've just won the game of life on every level at all. Everything you need to know and everything else, you just let go, and just watch it happen. It just happens like a movie. And, uh, and all the wisdom and all the knowledge that you need in order to use the Merkaba and all the information on exactly what to do and where to, to, how to move in this reality, you'll just know. You'll know exactly what to do. There's no more a need of an external teacher or anyone else. There's, uh, uh, you will find that you are whole, complete, and perfect and lacking nothing within yourself at that point. And those levels of uh, growth will continue on up and up and up, up into the higher levels. I'd like to uh, clarify uh, a little bit more about the lower self and the higher self, uh, just so we can get a better idea and understanding about these things. 
the the lower self, <clears throat> like I said, is the subconscious mind of you, which is further connected to the subconscious mind of all human beings on the whole planet, which is further connected to the subconscious mind of the entire biosphere, of the entire consciousness of the whole planet. And as I now understand it, it is even further connected dimensionally inward toward the center of the earth through all the dimensional worlds that actually are a reflection of all that is outside the planet. When I was first given the name Drum Below Melchizedek, um, the angel said that the name Drum Below Melchizedek was a Druid name. And they said that, the, that uh, Drum Below was the name of a little tree that grew by a creek. And so I accepted that. I said, okay, Drew and Below sounds like what would be a Druid name, but Melchizedek, in my mind, I was going for years. That just doesn't sound like a Druid name. It, you know, it seems to be in the Hebrew traditions and in the Christian traditions, but never thought of it as being Druid. And when I was in England at one point, uh, and I had connected with Merlin and was studying and becoming aware of the ascension uh, in, in the Druid, Druid tradition, uh, they have a very similar process of initiation where you become connected to the trees and specifically the oak trees and the fairies and the life. You start going through the same process and eventually you ascend not away from the earth but toward the center of the earth. And I'm picking this book up and reading about their ascension process toward the center of the earth where it says, right in this Druid book, that the Druids believed that in the very center of the earth was Melchizedek. My just about fell over when I saw that. And, uh, and realizing that the two poles of the end, that they saw it the same way, but they've, that, that, but exact mirror image of the whole thing. And so when we're talking about lower self, we're really talking about a vast consciousness that extends down through all of life but in a different way and that appears to relate to us as human beings in a very childlike way where the consciousness that comes from above from the stars and the heavens and all the higher dimensional levels appears to communicate to us from more like a father figure than a childlike figure and uh, and the ancients also felt it was extremely important that ascension began away from the earth. And I'm still learning what this is all about. In fact, the whole aspect of Jesus coming onto the earth was that he was the first one to ascend away from the earth. And uh, if you uh, read the England tapes and see what that is all about, you'll begin to understand uh, uh, even more uh, about what I'm talking about here. To further define this thing between the, the lower and the higher self with kind of us in the middle, it's, uh, it's very much like the macrocosm and the microcosm link between the two of us. Uh, it's very much like the planet Earth and the, and the sun. The sun is linked to the Earth through a gravitational field, and they're linked into a single system, but they're very, very, very different. And... Uh, and this is very much like the difference between the higher self and the lower self. Uh, another uh, way to see this connection between lower self and higher self is that it is very much like the planet Earth because the lower self really is the planet Earth. The, the, and uh, the higher self is like the sun that ex is connected to all the other stars and headed out that way. And that there's a connection between the two. It's uh, very much like the macrocosm, the stuff that's really big, and the microcosm that's really little, and us in the middle. There were images of this all over the world, by the way. Uh, in, uh, in Egypt, it, you would see the vulture uh, on one end of this image, and uh, the snake on the lower end of the image with the right eye of Horus in the middle representing these three levels, the bird that was of the high, the snake that was on the ground, and the eye that was in the middle. And you see that same image, if you go into Peru, you see it as the condor and the uh, another kind of snake that I don't remember, 
and the uh, it was a particular kind of leopard that they used in the middle. The Mayans used uh, the condor and a and a and a, 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 a black leopard, I believe it was, and a, and a rattlesnake. And the American Indians used um, the eagle, and um, I think it was the eagle and the coyote and the rattlesnake. Uh, all over the world, the Tibetans used uh, the uh, a rooster and a pig and uh, and a certain kind of snake. Again, all over the world, the same image representing these three different components that all have to be brought together for us to be a whole person again, because we have separated from all of, all of these kinds of things. So how does one really begin in all of this? Well, once you... Uh, Once you have got to the place where you can begin to open up to nature and let this inner child out, this is a very big, important step. But if you allow your uh, psychic side to begin to, uh, if you can just trust in yourself psychically, uh, there's lots of ways. Um, For example, when I was learning dowsing, and dowsing could be a very useful tool to learning about how you can connect with lower self. My teacher uh, used to have uh, uh, this house, and it had shag rugs. It was a two-story house. It was a big house. And, uh, and his wife would take a corn kernel and hide it in the shag rug somewhere in the house. He could find it every time within 60 seconds time after time after time and all you would do is just take a map of the house and you know and I, and I suggest that you do something like this he'd take a map of the house and draw a rough thing of all the rooms and he, and he used two tools uh, a pendulum and a, and a set of rods you can either use the crossing rods or the bending ones like the, the sticks and um, and so she would hide it and she says okay I hit it and he would just go where is it he would ask where it was and he would allow the pendulum to just move. You have to step aside, no ego. Just allow it to go, and it moves over, and it goes, and it'll pinpoint a spot. You then have to absolutely believe and trust. That's the place. So he would show which room it was, and approximately where it was in the room. He would then run upstairs, go to that spot, which he knew was about so big, take his other rods, and go, and then go down, and just and pull the corn kernel out. And I found I could do the same thing. There was nothing to it. And, I went, and as soon as I did it one time, that was it. I did it another time, and wow, this is not just coincidence here. And I could just keep doing it. And, uh, and I was able to discover... Uh, so you don't have to find just water, for example, when you're dousing. You can find anything. He used to find all the oil fields and everything. Uh, you can find anything. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, he used to find uh, people who'd have stolen cars. And he'd just take a map of the United States, find out what city it was, take a map of that city, find out what block it was now parked on. And then they would just go there and get the car and drive it away. <laughs> and uh, uh, I remember when I first... Uh, he first taught me how to use uh, the rods and r relative to finding water and uh, and the excitement of feeling those rods pull over so much that the rod would break off at the end I mean the very thought of how holding a stick out and have the end of it break off when you're holding it back here is impossible by anything that we know you know I used to break from maybe 10 or 15 of them a day when I was doing this because it would get so strong they'd break off so I'd have to carry a whole bunch of them so I found out that you could use nylon rods that don't break and they work better. And uh, uh, and so this is a way that you could begin to see and prove directly to yourself that these things are true. You could have people hide things in this room like this and find them immediately. And and you be, and you build confidence between you and your lower self, and you begin to see this happening. Uh, it can be used in many, 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 many different ways. Um, you know, I would, uh, I could go on and on on, on all of that, but even without dousing rods, 
uh, you can begin to use your intuition where uh, you believe that something is true and something's going to happen and, and allow it to come up. Trust yourself. Allow it to be, begin to come out. And this allows uh, the connection, the communication to begin to take place between you and the lower self, between the whole planet. And the more that communication takes, out, takes up, the more the planet wants to communicate with you. Mother Earth loves you, really, really loves you, and wants to, you to open up. But you have to allow it. There's free will here. You don't have to. You can stay locked in your world forever. But if you can allow it, if you'll open it up, think of the possibility that there might be something more to this world than just driving around in cars and putting money in a bank account. There might be something that's maybe more interesting than, uh, than that. And, uh, and you begin to explore the human potential. And the human potential is vast. And, um, and it leads into worlds and into places that right now uh, you, you can't really imagine. But you've got to start somewhere. And the beginning is starting with being childlike, innocent, being like a baby. And I really think that this is what Jesus meant when he said, At least ye become like children you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. I now think that he meant that literally, absolutely literally, that uh, without the childlike innocence, you're simply not going to get into heaven and go into the higher dimensional levels. So, uh, uh, there are many, uh, I want to cover one more area of this. In terms of opening up, and beginning the process, uh, there are now many levels of therapy that are out there that have been developed in the last few years that are really, really good. Um, you know, and when you go back to uh, Freudian type uh, thoughts that kind of, you know, begin to see uh, the connection between the physical body and the emotional and mental, and then going into uh, uh, people who, like uh, Wilhelm Reich, who took this way to a much deeper level than, than, uh, than uh, Freud ever dreamed of, and, uh, and through uh, Wilhelm Reich, who began to see that things that happen in your childhood are buried in your muscles and in, your, in the constriction of your electrical uh, circuits, and, uh, and out here around you in your crystalline fields and everything else in your aura and that these patterns are so painful that we don't want to experience them, so we bury them. This gave rise to Fitz Pearl and a lot of the work that he did in psychodrama, where you can begin to release these through uh, d directly getting into these experiences. And Ida Rolf, who said, well, let's go directly into the muscles and find them there and, and work in those kinds of ways. And, and Mary's people began to work deeper and deeper until finally uh, hypnotherapy came forth. And hypnotherapy uh, has become an awesome tool in all of this. What used to take 10, 15, 20 years can now be done in three or four sessions, in three or four hours, five hours, six hours. Things that, uh, and without pain, and very, very quickly can be released. Um, many, there are many, many things within a human being that the average human being is not aware of that is blocking them from being able to open up to their inner child and to allow the, the, uh, the sensitivity to the reality to return. Uh, there are actual, actual living forces inside of many people called entities that have been there for sometimes thousands and thousands of years many times all the way back into Atlantis. And these uh, entities uh, need to be released. Hypnotherapy can move through these things very, very quickly. Uh, there are many uh, things that have happened in your past lives, such as being stabbed or shot or hands cut off or heads cut off or raped or murdered or humiliated and all these kinds of things that can be sensed very, very quickly and can be got directly to and released. Let's just let go of 
there are ways now that, that this can take place. And uh, there are ways to now get into the patterns of between conception and 12 years old, which is where many of your blockages are now taking place, uh, that used to take so long to work through, that can now be worked through in hours uh, by, the pe by many people who are trained in these areas. Uh, there are ways of even reaching into the future to, to, to uh, uh, begin to uh, connect with patterns that are going to happen in you, that haven't even developed yet, but the roots are, have already, the seeds have already been in there and can be traced down. And, uh, and if these kinds of things can be worked through first, if you can get rid of all the entities and all these kinds of things in your past life and clear this stuff out so you, you can be clear within yourself, it is from this point that uh, the inner child can be released uh, most easily. Otherwise, you're going to have aspects within you. You're going to have walls and things that will simply stop you that just won't allow you to. You'll just say, oh no, I can't do that and walk away. You won't, you won't know. And so, I guess really, the beginning is healing. This is where the real place begins, of healing your body, both physically, emotionally, and mentally, on those kinds of levels. And to work through all this kinds of stuff. It may feel like you're backtracking, but if you don't get through those kinds of things first, um, it would be very difficult to uh, allow the inner child to come forth. And then there are now many people who are trained specifically on exactly that one thing of how to get the inner child out and, uh, and to begin that, um, that growth process within you. And, uh, and so uh, you may, uh, again, use your intuition and allow yourself to be brought into the... and, and allow these healers to be brought to you to uh, help you to uh, begin in those kinds of ways. There's so much available right now. There's so many ways of healing. There's so many people that have training that is extraordinary that uh, if you really have the desire to return to God and to open up into a new way, it's all there. You can find it. You've got to have the will and the desire to do it. But it's, it's all there. You just have to do it. You just have to go out there and begin the work and have the courage to, uh, to find out who you really are.